Hello, welcome. In this video, I uh, want to talk about how we can use systems of linear inequalities to understand questions that have a lot of meaning and are relative to the issues that we're dealing with in our world. You know, this mathematics is beautiful on its own, but looking at systems of inequality, it's important to understand that it does have tremendous applications. You can use it maybe to think about ways to change the world around you. And what I chose to focus on was this, that um, one, right now about 1 billion people have less than $1 a day to live. And this, uh, I first came across this when I was watching Living on One. And uh, one of the things that students ask, a natural question, just looking at this is, can we help them? Can we do anything about it? Because having less than a dollar a day, you can imagine how that impacts your ability to thrive. And what you're probably constantly doing is thinking about how to survive and get through your day. And, it, and we want to understand, well, what can we do about it? So the first thing you probably want to do is understand the, cope, the scope of the problem. And, and actually, linear inequalities help us out with that as well. So one of the biggest issues with poverty in general is eating. Right, so we want to look at um, what it means to eat with less than one dollar a day, and I guess I guess we could say in a general way that we know that's difficult. That's that's intuitive, right? To have less than a dollar a day, that that's not enough. But the problem is when we we just say that and leave it there, we have nowhere else to go. We want to understand precisely how difficult this really is. And to do that, we want to start modeling the problem. So in the, uh, in the video, Living on One, one of the things that struck me was that they focus on eating rice and beans as a meal that was affordable and has protein. And that's something they can get access to. So let's look at rice and beans in terms of a dollar a day. So let's say this is the cost of rice per pound. And all of these models can fluctuate with these actual costs fluctuating. So if, if this number changes, our model can then adapt to it. But let's assume this is the price of, let's say, a pound of rice. And x will be the number of pounds that, of rice that we're getting. And then we look at, let's say, the cost of beans per pound. And then the y will be the pounds of beans that we buy. And you can buy some combination of rice and beans, but you have to spend less than a dollar per day to do that. And also, in terms of a healthy ratio, it should be about one to one or higher in terms of beans to rice. So the ratio of beans to rice, beans y, pounds of beans, x pounds of rice, they could be equal to each other or the amount of beans, the ratio of the beans, of the beans to the rice could be greater than one. So we have the second inequality. We also can have a negative amount. These are the, these are the implied constraints. We can have a negative amount of rice or beans, and they can't be zero either. We've got to buy some amount. So we have this system right here. And um, also we want to think about calorie intake, right? Because these are the cost. This is what is healthy enough. But what's also really important is that we're getting enough calories to get through our day. And let's assume that 2,000 is sufficient, 2,000 calories. We can look at the calories in rice and beans, and we can say that for rice, we're looking at about 591 calories per pound. And then for beans, we're looking at about 605 calories per pound. And we want that total amount of calories to be greater than or equal to 2,000. So let me write the 2,000 over here. Now, th this model is based on all of these assumptions. And if you know that any of these assumptions are wrong, let me know and I'll, I'll respond. But let's assume this is the case, right? that these numbers are about correct. And I know this model is far from incomplete. For example, if we were cooking rice and beans, we want to cook them in something, not just water, but maybe oil or lard, just as I did in the video. And that would significantly impact uh, our calorie intake. And that might change the model tremendously. But this is just a starting point looking at rice and beans so you understand how this can apply. And I think it would be really interesting to perhaps think and look at ways to improve this model to get a better uh, understanding of where we can go with this. So this is our, our assumptions right now. And the important thing, again, is that for any model, you can change these numbers or add to these inequalities here to get a better sense of, what, of what's going on. So 
So, so what? What do we do? Well, let's go to our graph. I got some old equations here. Let me clear them off. So first of all, let's say that our first inequality is about the, what we can buy. So pounds of rice plus the cost of beans per pound times the pounds of beans that we're buying has to be less than one. And you can say less than or equal to, but we the video focuses on less than a dollar a day. So here, all of these points in this region are the combinations of what? Think about that, all right? Think about that any point I pick in this region is a combination of rice and beans that I can buy for under one dollar. So for example, this point right here, this is one, this is a half. And if I go up, let's say to a quarter here, all right, so that tells me I can buy a half a pound of X, so that's rice, plus a quarter pound of beans, and that total will be less than a dollar. You can plug in a half and a quarter and you'd see that, right? So that's the first part. These, these are all those points. But we also know that you can have a negative amount of X, which is rice, pounds of rice, has to be greater than zero. And you can't you have to have more than zero pounds of beans. So now our 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 region that is a common solution to throw all three inequalities is here. And let me just change some of the color so that these don't overshadow each other. Let's maybe fix that one. It's a little bit easier to see. So this bounded polygon right here represents what? Think about that. It's all the combinations of uh, pounds of rice and beans that we can buy for less than a dollar. So there aren't that many options, right? And the other issue is that we want the ratio in which we buy rice and beans to be nutritious. And the thinking here is generally that beans have more protein than rice does. So you, you want to have a ratio where you have at least one-to-one -one beans and rice. The more beans you have to rice, the more protein you have, but you don't want to have a situation where it's basically all rice and one bean. So we're using the guidance that healthy is about a one-to-one -one ratio. So we can say that that means y is either equal to x or y is, which is the pounds of beans, is greater than or equal to. So now we get this region here. There aren't that many possibilities, but these are the possibilities in this region where our, our cost is below a dollar. We're, we're buying more than zero of rice and beans, and um, the ratio of beans to rice is somewhat healthy. So now we're limited, let's say, I want a quarter pound of, let's see, where would that be? About a quarter pound of rice would be here. Here's a half, here's a quarter. And I could buy a quarter pound of rice and a little bit more than a quarter pound of beans, and I'd be okay. But is that enough to eat? We don't want to forget our calorie intake. Now, and unless I made a mistake on the calories here, I believe this is correct, 591 calories per pound with rice plus 605 calories per pound of bean. That combination of calories based on pounds has to be greater than 2,000. But the problem is, oh no, right? This green region right here um, represents all the ways we can get more than 2,000 calories. But our solution, our possibility down here of what we can afford is nowhere near. There's a gap, right? In other words, we can't afford to buy enough calories. And you saw that in the video. You saw that it was difficult to... Um, be able to afford, if you watch this video, afford enough food to have energy. And you see children that are having a hard time growing and families that are low in energy because they're not able to consume enough calories. Now, before we manipulate these numbers, also realize other shortcomings of this model that we are only looking at the expenses on uh, the expenditure on food. So we're assuming they're using all their money for food. We're looking at housing and other things that are also really important. So I'm not saying that we're going to reach anything conclusive in this model. That's not the goal. The goal is to understand how we can start to use this model to understand where we are, which we, we now kind of get that sense that, oh, wow, there's no way to have a healthy dish of beans and or rice and beans for under a dollar that also has enough calories. Right? We can see that here based on this assumption. But the other part I want you to realize is that we can then change the model to try and make some conclusions. Are the conclusions of this model valid and complete? No, but it's a starting point. And what I would suggest is uh, we clean this up a little bit. This is a little hard to read. There's just too much happening in this, in this graph. So we're going to clean it up, and then we're going to ask another question, which is, okay, if they don't have enough food, 
to, they don't have enough money, excuse me, to get the food they need, to get the calories they need, how much money would they need? Because that's the next question. Many people will say, oh, there's no way to fix this. There's nothing we can do. And whether or not you agree with that is unimportant. What I would say is you should at least know what has to be done, and then you can figure out, can it be done? Don't just say it can't be done. Figure out what needs to be done. That's what the math will speak to here. Anyway, how do we clean this up? This is a mess. We start by using function notation. And f of x is y, so I'm just going to isolate y in this first inequality, but I'm going to treat it like an equality. So I'm going to get y by itself. I'm going to subtract 0.72x from 1, so 1 minus 0.72x, and then I want to get y by itself to divide everything by 1.49. So now, and you'll see where this is going in a moment, then I want um, f of x to be greater, I want I want y value is greater than zero. So this is my first function. I'll put a one there. F at the f one. The second function I want to use is equal to zero. Again, I'm rewriting as, as equalities. And the third function is right here. F three of x. Uh, so y is greater than or equal to x. So I'll set equal to as an equation. <clears throat> and you can see it's overlapping the boundary of y is greater than or equal to x. So that's that's on purpose. And then finally, we want to isolate y in this last equation. So the fourth function, this one right here. Notice I skipped x is greater than 0. It's not a function. It's a vertical line, right? This vertical line right here, that region. So we'll come back to that. But anyway, the, this one, I want to isolate y. So I want to subtract 591x from 2,000. So 2,000 minus 591x. And then I want to divide the whole thing by 605. OK, so now let me hide these equations. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm going to, there's the x is greater than 0. I'm going to leave that one off for now. But I, I know that um, this line right here is the boundary for healthy recipes. I want to be above that. And I know that, let's see, this line right here, I have to be below that one as well. So above this line, below this one, so it's forming this region right here. and um, I think that's it. I'm going to ignore calories for now. So the first thing I want to do is graph this, pound, this bounded polygon. So I want to look at all the heights that are greater than the second function, uh, the third function, excuse me, f3 of x less than y. Uh, it could be less than or equal to, excuse me, y. But also less than, again, the has to be less than a dollar a day, so it has to be less than the first function. So already this is a little bit cleaner, and also I can put a vertical um, line, in this case x greater than zero, that domain restriction as a domain restriction here in the bracket, so x is greater than zero. So this is just highlighting that region that we started off with, using function notation with a domain restriction that you can have any recipe that's on this line of one to one or greater, but less than this cost line right here and greater than x is zero because you can't have zero or negative pounds of uh, rice. I didn't have to mess with this function right here, f2 greater than zero because that's already taken care of because our line has, our region has to be greater than y is, greater, y is equal to x. So we already have taken care of that. So now let's zoom out. We want to get into this region over here and um, we can graph that region again, y is greater than the fourth function, basically, right? Uh, greater than or equal to. So we want to get this green region over there. How do we do that? We keep changing the one. That's the dollar a day. What if we gave them $2 a day? Okay, we're getting closer. What if it was $3 a day? Much closer. What if it was $4 a day? Finally, there we see there's some small possibilities. This region, think about what that represents. It represents combination of rice and beans that are have a one-to-one -one ratio of beans to rice, a little bit healthier, and are less than $4 a day, but also provide more than 2,000 calories. So it's possible to get enough calories, at least, um, if they have $4 a day. Now, $1 wasn't enough. $4 is enough, what's the smallest amount that would be enough based on this model? And that's an important question so you can understand, well, is there a possibility to get there by spending less? Because this is a billion people, uh, a small amount scaled up by a billion is clearly, clearly matters. So let's go back to our system and solve that. 
Right now, this system has no solution because there's no point that falls within the interse intersection of these regions right here. But we know there has to be some value in which there is a solution. And we'll call that k. So what is that k value? Let me zoom back in. So when we find that k value, to imagine in, in earlier problems, we look at any kind of bounded region, just triangle. We talked about finding the vertices of that bounded region using equalities. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. And if I go back to the graph, I can show you what I mean. In the graph here, when I change it, let's say to 4, for example, this forms this region right here. right? So the vertices represent intersections of those lines and equalities. So we can find those vertices. We can find the first time you do have an intersection and that there's a possibility of getting enough calorie intake. So let's take a look at that. You know, this is an overwhelming system, but I think that here, if I was to rewrite an equality, this is the one that will help me the most. y equals x. That's fairly easy to use, and if we use that, we can actually start making some really quick progress, because if y equals x, and then we look over here at our calorie intake and substitute that in, we can quickly solve for how many pounds of rice or beans we need. So let's do that. Let's find when this line, when we have equal amounts of, of rice and beans, or and if y first beans and rice, if we do that, how many pounds do we need of each? So plug it in, substitute. 591x plus 605, instead of y, y equals x, put an x there, and say it equals 2,000. We're just going to find out when these, if this were an equation and this were an equation, when they would meet. And that would be what? 1196 times x equals 2,000. And if you divide both sides by 1196, you get an answer. About 1.6722 pounds of in that case, rice, but that's also true for the beans. So we need about 1.6722 pounds of rice and beans in order to get 2,000 calories. That, that will work for us. But then what we want to do is look at, well, how much money do we need to get that? So now we can substitute that into our first equation. Again, substituting y equals x. So 0.72x plus 1.49x let's say, equals k. When will this happen? Well, 0.72 plus 1.49 is 2.21, let's say, x equals k. And we know that x also has to be 1.6722. So we can say 2.21 times 1.6722, the exact amount, I forget, I have it in the calculator, but that's what equals k. And if we round this, say, to the nearest cent, we get $3.70, and that will do it. So let's go back to our graph and see what that means. So if I change this to 370, you can say you can see that there's an intersection. It's minuscule, of course, because it's just reaching that region. We found when this y equals x line first meets the um, inequality here, and also meets this inequality here. And uh, you, you say, well, you can make this smaller. It's just the degree to which I'm rounding this. And it tells us, you can see here's that 1.67 pounds of rice, about 1.672 pounds of beans. It gets us about here, right? That's one of the possibilities. And there are others. There, there's an equality there. And actually, sorry, 1.72 is about here. <laughs> That's the intersection of y equals x and our uh, two equations here. Right, we have, where is it? Highlight it. The calorie equation. It's not doing anything. Why is it not doing anything? It'll tell me. I think right there. So, this calorie, there it is. The calorie equation with the y equals x, they meet there. And then over here, you can see how close these are. The y equals x meets the, uh, the line for cost. And there are some smaller values in there. It depends how you round it where that also happens. But we're finding one of the earliest instances where this happens. So that tells us, going back to this, that there, it is possible with about $3.70 to help these people get enough calories. And what does that mean? If this is, Let's say this model is correct. Let's say it's everything we have to think about. It's not, but let's just say that. It means if we can increase income per person by $2.70, so... Let's write that down, $2.70 per person. And there are 1 billion 
persons who need this help, we're looking at what? 2.7 billion per day. Okay, and then we take 2.7 and we scale it up by a year. And let's just round up to three, right? Now we have an exact sense in case we, in case we need to, right? We can fall back on that additional 270 because they, they need a total of $3.70. They have a dollar, about a dollar. So we need, let's say, about $3. Well, that's going to be, what is that? 900 plus 180 plus 15. Yes, I'm breaking it apart. 1,080, 1,095. And this is in terms of billions. Now, if you have 1,000 billions, you have a trillion. So you have one. Point oh nine five trillion dollars per year to help out these people, and that's a lot of money. But but how much is that? In, let's say relative to other things in the world, you might know that uh, the U.S. economy, for example, is over seventy trillion dollars. So this is one seventieth of just the U.S. economy. And if you were to split this cost amongst all the people of of, of the countries of the world, nations of the world, um, we could even look at what a small fraction of their GDP that represents. In other words, this is doable, right? We can do something about this. And if you're and if you're not convinced that way, think about it another way. If you need to get one person three dollars, right? There's about a billion people that need this three dollars per day, and the population of the Earth is over seven billion, right? So there are for the one, for every one person that needs the three dollars, there are one, two, three, four, five, six people who don't. And if you take three dollars and split it amongst six people, that's only fifty cents per person per day. Right, And when you look at it from this perspective on the scale of the world, even without looking at GDPs or global economies, you might start to think, oh, that's actually kind of doable, right? Even though maybe it's not easy to figure out how this works, but if everyone works together here and contributes, it's only 50 cents a day. And that's not so bad. That's about $15 a month, which is about what we pay for Netflix and other types of subscription services. So um, is it doable? It, it is. How do we do it? Well, if you make a model, you at least have a number to work with and a starting point. You go beyond just saying it is possible or it isn't. You have a number. And then if you want to debate the model, the merits of the model, the accuracy, what do we miss, you can do that, but at least it gives you a place to talk about it. And that's the beauty of mathematics, and that's one of the wonderful things about systems of inequalities. It gives us a way to talk about really complex and difficult issues like eating for people who have no, almost no money. All right, I hope this helps.